Hello, we've been corresponding for a couple of days. You have ended up having a very severe shoulder and related back kind of ser in, in fact, you're wearing a heating pad on your on your shoulder now, right? Right. And the flu. Yep. Okay. And those that came, and the reason we're talking going to have a session <clears throat> is those came about because you asked me for some help on these, and you had told me that you and your partner had had a, like a domestic argument of some kind. Right. And I asked you, I said, well, is that all resolved? And you said, oh, yeah, that's all resolved. Okay. So I'm not sure I bought that at the time, but we went, we went on and we tried to help with your shoulder. And we went no place, did we? Nope, not a, not a bit. And we spent, I don't know, 20, 30, something. I mean, it was, we did a fair amount. But and nothing. Nothing happened. Oh, no. And then shortly after that, here comes the flu, which yeah. you now have. Yeah. Okay. Now, you know, and I know, because we've been around this topic enough, that those causes come from within. They don't just show up someplace. Right. We cause them. Okay. right. So we had, we had worked, we're doing a little summary here, just because other, others are watching and we're going to do a summary and then we're going to launch off of that into some more work. But um, we had also done some work because we thought maybe underneath this was some emotional issue. And the one that we landed on was the fact that you didn't feel worthy. Yeah? Right, yeah. Have Is that no the word? Were those, like you felt worthless, were those the words? Value, so, somehow value works, but I had no value. You had no value. Oh, yeah. You had no value. And we went back to that and we, we discovered, well, starting at age two, um, your mother who apparently had more than one personality, a very loving mother on the one hand, but a very vicious, aggressive woman on the other, was sexually abusing you vaginally starting at age two with some frequency yes yep absolutely okay lots of pain in there etc and we worked we worked on that but we were working on the larger issue of i'm not valuable because see, a very young child being abused that way can very easily get the idea i'm not good enough i'm not lovable i'm worthless i'm not valuable right same kind of thing and that piece apparently did well. At least you told me the next day it did well. How's it? I mean, at first, when I asked you to say, you know, I'm not valuable, I'm worthless, or whatever the phrase was, you were, a, it felt like a 10. Yeah, it, it went right up, and there's, there's nothing now. It hasn't been, it's been at a zero since. Yeah, so the whole idea of being worthless, which you know logically to be untrue. It's ridiculous. You know, is ridiculous. Okay, so you don't have that, that emotional that emotional punch anymore. No. Nope. Well, hooray! Yes, hooray! <laughs> but but we did not get apparently to what was causing the shoulder, and well, we had the flu at the at the moment, but that apparently wasn't the foundation underneath your shoulder because your shoulder was still your shoulder right. went nowhere. It went right. nowhere. Yeah. Zero. Zero. <laughs> As I recall, there wasn't even a temporary little, oh, wait, I think you went from a 10 to maybe a nine and a half or something, did you? Yeah, there, there was a teeny little bit and it came right back. It, there was nothing. Yeah, okay. So, in baseball terms, we struck out. Yeah, totally. <laughs> okay. So then, you wrote me and said, now I've got the flu. And I wrote you back and I basically said, I'm wondering if this tiff with your partner doesn't have something more foundational underneath it. Um, because it was after that tiff that you got the bursitis, it's called by the doctors, okay, in the right. shoulder. Yeah. And um, the flu. And you wrote me <laughs> a letter, okay? Describing all of that. Yeah. 
And you ended up with what I thought was a very mature, very insightful concept. And I, it's that that I'd like to have you talk about a little bit, and then we will go from there and see what we can do with unseen therapists. Okay. So what was the realization? What happened? Tell us, just in your own words, whatever time it takes, what happened? Well, um, I, I read what you said that you thought there might be some unresolved issue there. And I thought, well, you know, I was just lying. I was flat on my back, couldn't do anything. So I just started saying, well, let me just look and see what I can find. And, and, and like various issues came up around sexuality and intimacy. And it was like when I would start working on one, then another one would, would come and, and, and it kind of kept going like that. And then I got down to what really was the problem is not the abuse. It was not losing the eye, but it was that I lost my mom. I, I lost my mother's love. That was the really crushing thing. And so unseen therapists came galloping in and it, 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 just, it, it went really fast. I was, I was surprised. And then I thought, wow, I'm good. And then I was like one step further down the rabbit hole saying, well, it's not even that my mom didn't love me anymore, but it was that I could no longer love her. That, that I was not allowed, I wasn't able to access my own love anymore and express that love. And there was, I mean, when I, when I hooked into that, I was like, I could barely breathe. I was choked up. It was so painful. And, and, uh, but, but unseen therapist again came in and, and I don't think it, I mean, that probably didn't take more than 10, 15 minutes for that big issue. And then, and then it was, I, I, it was, it was gone. I, I couldn't, it was all I could feel was love. Even when I thought about my mom and I thought about the awful things that, that she did and, and it was all, all I could feel was love. Well, that, despite the fact you, you told me before we recorded that the sexual abuse and the penetration, all of that, was so painful that you would have you would have um, was it dreams or dreams yeah. or something about, like like bombs going off inside you vaginally or something like that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So just to go back over that for a moment, there were two sides to your mom that you would recognize even at the very early age. There was a loving mother. Yes. The kind of thing that every child would love to have the cuddling and the holding and the whatever, all, the kissing and whatever goes on. Yeah. The loving mother. Okay. Then there was the other side of mother, perhaps a multiple personality, who knows, but the other side of her, which was very aggressive, vicious, angry. And so what can you do as a two-year-old? But and what are you going to do with that conflict? Right. <laughs> I mean, you know, you have no, re you're, you're two years old. You have no resources, you know, to, to weigh anything with or anything like that. So you shut off and now you really, I'm, I'm just restating what you said. So we have it well stated. So you just shut it off, not only love to your mother, but your ability to love period. Yes. Yeah. Now we didn't discuss this, but somewhere in this idea, uh, about shutting off love is the idea that to love can be painful. In fact, we often experience that. We, we love, you know, I mean, we fall in love at age 12 or something, and then, then our, our, our partner lover dumps us, and then that feels bad, and we don't ever want to go, go there again, okay? Right, right. So we have these oftentimes penalties for loving. We see it a lot. We love a pet. The pet dies. Oh my, you know, and grief. I mean, ugh. there's a penalty for loving. Now, does that seem to fit here? You're loving your mother, and yet well, here, here comes this is, abuse. That was definitely a bad, bad idea because, because love will destroy you. Yeah, love will destroy you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, okay, so... I'm going to have you say that sentence again for me, but I'm going, to, I'm going to have you tell me on a scale of zero to 10 how true it feels to you, not how true logically it is for you. So say it, say it again, love will destroy you. Love will destroy you.
Well, now there's it, it's it's a little muddled right now because now I'm also feeling a lot of anger because nobody was there to help me. So that's kind of coming in over it. So I can't really tell what's what right now. Okay, you had mentioned that to me before that nobody was there to help you. Yeah, my dad didn't do a thing. He did nothing, and my aunt didn't do anything. Nobody did anything. Okay. Well, there were some words I forgot. I forget them now. Uh, nobody was there to to help me. Therefore, you can't you can't rely on unseen therapists to help you. Yeah, you, there was there was something there was something about that. So you you can't even trust God or unseen therapists. So you, you can't even trust the spiritual one because nobody came from any, any dimension anywhere. There was no help whatsoever. Okay. And behind that, I'm just exploring, Hella. Behind that is I don't deserve help. I don't deserve love. Yeah, there's just there's something wrong with me that they don't that I just don't count. Okay. I guess that kind of somewhat circles back to the valuable thing that, you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not valuable enough in, in that to, to, even come, to even come help. Okay, even. so now we're back to the I'm not valuable thing, but you seem to have a, a big movement on that, but it's still not gone because we're now, we're now picking up little pieces where- Right, right, yeah. You know, Okay, so there's something wrong with you. You don't deserve it. And and what what else could you conclude from being a very young girl and having all this abuse go on? That there's something from a loving source, supposedly loving source. Right. That there's something, there's something wrong with you. Right. Well, there's. Okay. And 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 clearly that you can't trust anybody. You're always supposed to trust God. That's what everybody always says. But what, what's to trust? I mean, if nobody comes when you need them, well, how, how are you going to trust them? Yes, yes, yeah, yes. Now, I'm, I'm going to get a little theoretical with you for a moment, okay? And I know you are a student of A Course in Miracles. Not everybody listening in would be. I happen to be one as well. Right. And I'm, not, I'm not pushing the Course in Miracles here. I'm just talking about something that's in it that might be useful here, okay? Um. And, and that is, you know, and quantum physics, quantum physics backs this up, our pristine science. There's, we're really all connected. There's really all one, even though we seem to be all running around inside of separate bodies and a bunch of separate stuff, but separation is actually impossible. So we get in this separated state because we created it ourselves. We're very powerful. We're a lot more powerful than we think. So we get into this separated state now. Part of this separated state is the desire to ultimately be more special and all this. So instead of being all one and loving one another, but this is only love, we run around inside these separate little bodies, which have separate little interests, um, complex and everything else. Uh, and when we do that and we leave the connectedness, we get whatever it is we ask for. Now, what we're asking for, and this is something most of us just are not aware of, we're asking for a world of separation where all these atrocities are possible. That's the bigger ask, if you will. It comes with the idea of separation. Right. So that's what we ask for. I don't care if you're two years old or two decades old. I mean, that's what you're asking for. And of course, you're getting it. You are, I am, and so on. Way outside of our awareness. So when we're two years old and we're... That totally makes sense, Gary. I actually really get that. That totally makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the big ask. Okay. Right. And within all of that, now we seem to think now we can ask for stuff other than that. And all of a sudden, is it going to happen? Okay. So there you are being, <laughs> and you ask for something other than that. And you're not getting it. So that's why we even have optimal EFT and we develop the unseen therapist is we want to be able to ask for things in more specific ways because we're still dealing with the bigger picture. Okay. The bigger ask, if right. you will. Okay. 
So that little reframe may have helped. Yes, you, that, it totally helped. Wow. Okay. Okay. Well, all right. Others listening in don't have the same background, the same spiritual underpinnings that you do. They have their right. own. Right. And, and right. may or may not. But it works for you. Yes. So, so we're going to um, do a little unseen therapist thing here. Um, we'll do a, do a session. I'm just going to let things roll as they roll. I don't even know for sure what we're going to do yet. I just wait for guidance and off we go. Right. We'll just see what happens. Sounds good. Right. So, you know the drill. You close your eyes. You know, take a nice, deep, relaxing breath and recall a loving moment. And just nod your head when, whenever you're there. All right. All right, good. So by recalling the loving moment, we've simply let unseen therapists know that we're listening. Unseen therapists is always there. We're not always listening, but since we line up with love, and that's what love is, you know, we're going to be listening as well as we can anyway, realizing we still got our ego going on and all that other stuff. Okay. So we're going to go back in time now. And um, I be, if I recall it correctly, Helen, remind me when we did a session before we worked with the womb, did we not? Yeah, yes, we did. Okay. So I'm going to leave that be for the moment. I'm going to come back out to age two. And up until age two, your experience with your mother largely was one of a loving mother the kind of mother we'd all like to have you know sweet songs gentle touches there supporting us comfort the kind of thing we really need what well, we need all through our lives but particularly at these very early early ages and then somewhere around age two there's another side to mother in technical terms, maybe another personality, but another side, a vicious side, an angry side, a side that needs to express itself in ways that we're not really going to excuse here, but in ways that we could at least understand. Because people tend to, including your mother, people tend to act out in these ways because they have so much going on inside, so much unresolved stuff. They've got to take it out someplace. And they will tend to take it out in places where there isn't going to be any real resistance. They don't want to fight. They just want to express. Okay, And there you are. You have nothing to do with it, any of this. You're just there. And the next thing you know, there's pain, vaginal intrusions, unexpected stuff, a mother that cannot, cannot, at the moment at least, exhibit the kind of love that you deserve and that you would expect. Again, we're not criticizing her, but we're not excusing her either. We're trying to understand, most importantly, understand your response to all of this. Very understandable response because at this point, for self-preservation reasons, you have to cut off love. Love is expensive. Love has a penalty. You love your mother, and then this happens. And the young child can put those two together and say, love leads to this. Love will destroy you. Right. And so Unseen Therapist is here as we describe this. She's saying, well, love, Hella, as, you, as human beings separated people in this illusion, as they experience it, yeah, it's got penalties involved. You have decided, you have chosen to be separated, and you're powerful enough to do it beautifully. 
<laughs> and you do it, and along with that comes all these separate interests, and you have this great big thing you've asked for. I want to separate the world. I want to be more special. I want to bring all this stuff. And you have, at least for now, voluntarily, although you're not aware of it, turns your back on the oneness, the love that I, the unseen therapist, represent. So there you are at age two, and this is happening. And so I'm going to take myself within you at age two, and I'm going to counsel with you as all this is going on. And I'm going to say, yeah, yeah, Hella. If you need to protect yourself here, yes, because this is very scary, and you don't have the resources to do anything else other than shut this off. But understand, there's another level of love. There's the oneness level of love that I represent and that you are part of and don't really recognize it at this moment. But I am here. And I am now going to put myself, immerse myself throughout your body, through all the various cells, all the various brain neurons and all the other parts of the bodies and, that you have. And all of them are going to have the real love within them that is powerful enough, even at your age too, for you to recognize this is something that happens in the separated world. My mother is trying to deal with it very inappropriately. She's trying to express herself. But behind all of that, there's this love that allows me to stand back from it. Yes, my body is experiencing things that are painful and no fun. But behind that is a skill that once you develop this as unseen therapist at your age too, once you develop this skill to look, stand back from it and notice how people behave, even those who irritate you in later years and have tips with you and other things, that there's this ultimate love that is floating around within you that you can always lean back on and objectively observe what's going on, including your own response to what's going on. So there you are at age, at age two. And I'm going to, um, well, I was going to time it, but I, I won't. I will help you now, Hella. There you are at age two. Just imagine, if you will, as best you can, unseen therapist being within all of your various cells and neurons and all that stuff with an ability to stand behind, even at age two, and look at it maturely and objectively. Just give it a shot. Give it your try. Whenever you're done, let me know, and we'll continue. I feel that love very strongly. All right, good. Now we're going to shift for a moment once we have that. And we're going to enter this tube that we did in our very last session. It's a tube uh, big enough around that you can walk through it, uh, maybe six, seven feet in diameter, something like that. And at one end of the tube, that we, and you're standing in now, is the two-year-old you. The two-year-old before you have this realization that we just talked about recently with all the love infusing all the parts of your, your body. This confused, shut off two-year-old. And at the other end, and let's just say this uh, tube is maybe 10 steps long. At the other end of the tube is this complete 
mature understanding of the unseen therapist, which is actually yours, but you have become unaware of it over time because of experiences like your age two and the ensuing sexual assaults and other experience you've had, like we all collect over your several decades of, of life. And what we're going to imagine now is you walking at whatever pace, however slowly you need to do, from your age two to your current age, your current age and this complete realization being, this, being one and the same at the end of this tunnel. And we recognize that between the age two and the current age, as this tunnel unfolds, are all these other experiences, the other sexual abuses by your mother, other behaviors by your mother, behaviors by people who weren't there to help you when they should have, at least according to your rules. Take your time and go through them. Here's one, ah, and let unseen therapists come along and resolve that one. Ah, and here's another as we go further down, it's half a step maybe or whatever, resolves that one and keeps going. It keeps going. And each time they get resolved, more and more of this ultimate infusion of unseen therapist love in your entire body becomes more and more and more until you finally reach the end. Now, we may or may not have perfection here. Maybe we need to do this more than once. But give it a try. I will help you. And whenever you think you're done, let me know. Okay.
Okay. Well, I gather that was meaningful. <laughs> Very funny. Oh, that was very, very powerful. I'm curious, not that we weren't really aiming at things like your flu and your shoulder and all that. Have you noticed any change in those? I, don't, I, I have to, uh, my shoulder is not hurting at all right now, but, but that's been on and off. So I would, I would need to test it, you know, with some, some other movements. So I, uh -huh. I'm not... All right, well, it, it may take time and maybe we didn't, what we were doing didn't aim specifically at those. The bigger aim, however, and there's no way to test that until life unfolds for you, was how you react with your partner, uh, whether or not you're able to enjoy love at a, harder, a bigger level without waiting for the other shoe to drop and some penalty and it'll destroy you and that kind of stuff. Right. Say, say this for me. Love will destroy me. <laughs> well, that's, a, that's a good response, I guess. Yeah, no, I can't say I have any charge on that. <laughs> Love feels good. Yeah, but you see, it's just, an, it's just an expected natural part of the separated world to have conflict and arguments and, and, and want to pursue love in its various forms. But what I'd be curious about, because I, I think a really good step here, not only for you and me and anybody watching in, is if we can't get to this ultimate top of the stairway to miracles, enlightenment, it's all nothing but love, we can approach it. And, and one step along that way, I would think, would be to, when we are pursuing love and our partner or whoever it is or however we're pursuing love, aren't behaving in the way we want them to, <laughs> aren't returning the love or whatever it is that we, rules we put on it, that, that you're able, I'm able, listeners are able, to sit back and just observe, let that happen. That's okay. Your, your love does not have to be um, impinged upon. Exactly. Your yeah. love can be there, and it's not dependent on what someone else does. Yep, yeah. yeah. Or said, or and someone's so insults, or something like that. Right, yeah. No, you're, you're so right on, Gary. This is just... Well, that's going to be the test. And of course, you, you're not, we're not going to be able to test that right this moment, uh, you know, but time will come on and there will be differences of opinions and off it goes. That's just how it works. Okay. Right, right. So, so let, me, let me know if you're aware of any other kind of, rather than get defensive or whatever you would normally get to uh, and have bursitis and the flu <laughs> and stuff, um, if you can stand back and not have that bother you. Right, right. Yeah, certainly right now it doesn't bother me. All right, well, that's a good sign. It's a good yes, sign, but we're, we, out, we always test, we always test. Right. Okay, anything more you want to go over, Ella? No, I'm tired. <laughs> okay, got it. Got this it. was awesome, Gary, this was so good. Thank you, thank you so much.